Father, thank you for giving us today at Bryan College and for uh, this wonderful gift of uh, challenge of learning ancient uh, Greek. Um, I pray as we review uh, 4A today that um, this will be a breakthrough time for all of us. Um, I pray that you open our minds to the scriptures. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would be honored in our words and in our lives. And um, a triune God, you say, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. So we're asking uh, that you would help us today as we're um, trying to master this ancient language. We pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. So, I want you to bring your handy-dandy thing to class, if you don't mind. I know you look geekish, uh, but uh, we're going to use this. And if you can find the definite article side, so the side that has the definite article in the top um, left-hand side, what we're going to memorize, if you can find that top left-hand side, we're going to memorize about right here uh, today, right? You with me? I, I have a couple of extras if uh, you guys. Uh, so if you guys want to, but next time uh, bring your copy if you wouldn't mind. So. So what we're trying to find is the present active indicative of Amy. So you want to find the box on that big chart, uh, and it's it's going to be about right here on the definite article side. Present active indicative of Amy, and you say, what in the world is that? What is the present active indicative? Present, when you're talking about a verb, present means it's happening right now. So this is how you say, I am, in Greek. Ego eimi is how God says his name, I am, the great I am. Um, Jesus, several times in John's gospel, says, before Abraham was, ego eimi, I am. And they recognize, hey, that's um, playing with God's name. So... This is the verb part of that. So this is I am, this is you are, this is he, she, or it is, this is we are, this is you, plural are, this is they are. <coughs> Both the third singular and the third plural, if the next word begins with a vowel, it can have a removable um, new on there to help pronounce the word. So you'll see it. SD, and sometimes you'll see it as sten, but it's the same exact word. It's just whether or not the next word has a vowel. And same with AC and ASIN. You'll see both those. But what this is, is the present tense of Amy. It's active in that the subject is doing the action if it's a transitive verb. And indicative means it's stating a fact. This is in fact happening. So uh, there are six different uh, tenses, present, future, imperfect, eris, perfect, and pluperfect. We're, we'll look at all those. There are three voices, active, middle, and passive. This is the active. And then there are moods, indicative, uh, infinitive is the two-form, participle is the ing form. We'll learn all of those. But for right now, we're looking at the present active indicative of Amy. So what we have to do is memorize this chart. So can you say this chart with me without looking at the chart? Because we're going to write it out on the test at the end of uh, class. So say this with me without looking. Uh, what's the first? Amy, A, S, D, S, men, Este, AC, Amy, A, S, D, Esmen, Eta, AC. Okay, 
How many of you have started to feel the great tidal wave a little bit with all this stuff we've memorized? Like it's getting a little jumbled in your mind? Okay. Yes. Yeah. That's a great thing. And that's totally normal. And you're at a crossroads, okay? So if you want to find a shortcut and not spend two hours a day in Greek and cram for the end, you can do it that way. I've taught thousands of people Greek. No one's ever survived on that path. <laughs> Lots of people have gone down that path. Uh, the Greek tsunami gets them um, if you go down that way. Maybe you'll be the uh, wonder child who does it the first time, and I'll praise you endless, uh, you know, until I'm 86 years old and getting instead of say, well, I had one, and they were able to cram. But you'll be the only one. So I've, I've been teaching 35 years, and um, if you try to cram this, it just is too much, and it'll overwhelm your short-term memory. So we've got to take another path. And this is the path, whenever you do a comprehensive exam in anything, in medicine, in law, in whatever your uh, particular vocation, uh, often you, you will take a major comprehensive exam, and the only way to master that material is to get it in your long-term memory. And the only way to get something in your long-term memory is just go over it all the time. This isn't... Uh, an enormous amount of material. I mean, it's the stuff on the chart, but the only way you can get it is a little bit of review, but every single day. And uh, I've had the privilege of teaching a lot of people Greek, and a lot of people gone down that path and have just absolutely flourished. So the moral of that story is, hey, let's go on this path of just review a little bit every day, and then you're going to walk into an exam in December that's 25 pages long with chart after chart after chart, and you're going to get it. You're going to have it just like that because we started studying for that exam today, right? So that's how we have to look at this, which means we have to memorize this chart. Amy, A, Esten, Esmin, Esta, A, C. A, me, A, Esten, Esmin, as to AC. And if we go over it, it, eventually your memory will say, hey, this is important. I can't put it in my phone number section. I've got to put it in the real section. I've got to find a real section in the brain uh, to put it, and it'll put it there, and it'll be there forever. Um, so we've just got to go down the path of uh, memorizing it, and once you memorize it, once you get it in your long-term memory once, <coughs> it's there forever. It's there forever. And uh, you can take the quiz, you can take the same quiz five years later, it's still there uh, because you got it in your long-term memory. So that's what we're going to do. So this is a present active indicative. This is the imperfect active indicative. So it's still active, so the subject is doing the action if it were a transitive verb. It's still stating a fact, but now it's the imperfect. And the imperfect is the past continual tense. If you use paint, it would be, I was painting my house over and over again. This is the imperfect of a me. So this is how you say, I was, you were, he, she, or it was. We were, you were, they were. So say this with me. Can you say it without looking? Ain, astha, ain. So that's weird because they're both the same. Kind of weird. Ain, astha, ain. Amen. That's easy because it's kind of like esmen, right? This is amen. A te, a te, and then the third plural is a son. So this is I was, you were, he, she, or it was, we were, you were, they were. Does everyone want to understand what the chart is, like what this chart is representing? Um, for both Amy 
and ain. This is a grammatical <coughs> equal sign. So it doesn't take a direct object, it takes a predicate nominative. And you say, well, what does that mean? Well, think of this as a grammatical equal sign. Do subjects go in the nominative case? Yes. yes. If this is a grammatical equal sign, what's the he was blank? Will that go in the nominative case? Yes, yes because this is a grammatical equal sign. Even educated people get this wrong. And the reason they get it wrong is because they don't know the difference between a predicate nominative and a direct object. And so you'll get people with Ivy League educations who will um, just make these grammatical blunders because they don't understand that the verb is is a grammatical equal sign or what a direct object is. We have the privilege of struggling in Greek, and we are going to realize direct objects come after transitive verbs. I paint the wall. Do you see how the action transfers from me to the wall? Okay, wall will be in, in the accusative case because that's what you put direct objects in. Um, if I say I am a teacher, Is am a grammatical equal sign? Yes. Yes. So what case does teacher have to be in? Nominative, because it's a predicate nominative. So which one of these is grammatically correct? It's me, it is I. Which one of those is grammatically correct in English? It's me. Who, who's, who's the one? It's me. Or it is I. It's I. And why is I correct? It because, because I is in the nominative case. Oh, that makes so much sense now. Now, even educated people will get this one wrong. So and so invited my wife and I to dinner. Is that grammatically right or grammatically wrong? Why should it be my wife and me to dinner? He, yeah, you would never say so and so invited I to dinner, right? Because I is a nominative and me is the objective, right? And invite is a transitive verb. So if me is a direct object of invite, you must say so-and-so invited my wife and me to dinner. And you'll inevitably have people in the audience who will judge you as uneducated, and it's because they don't know English, right? So um, the people get who and whom wrong, same thing. Who is the nominative? Whom is the objective case? So if it's a direct object, you use whom. If it's a nominative, you use who. That's a simple rule, and you always get it right if you uh, follow that, because you're understanding that this is a grammatical equal sign. Right? You with me? So, can you say the Amy chart without looking? Amy? A? 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 Uh, AC is the third plural. SD. Amy A S D. Esmen. Do you do you feel that thing in your brain going on? That's the feeling of weakness leaving your body. Right? You're you're concentrating. Okay, so Amy. What's the second one? A, third one, Estin, or SD, Esmin, Este, Este, AC, Amy, A, Esti, Esmin, 
Esther AC. Okay, what's uh, second uh, plural? Esther. What's the third singular? SD. What's the first singular? What's the third plural? AC. What's the uh, first plural? S -N. Now do the uh, imperfect. Ain. Asta. Ain. So first and third are the same. Amen. Ata. A song. A song. How would I say we are in Greek? Esmen. How would I say you singular were? A star. Okay, do you need a rest? Yes. Okay, can I show you how to cheat on PowerPoint? <laughs> okay, uh, have you noticed that I have a lot of PowerPoints? Yes. And I've got a lot of writing on my PowerPoints. Um, have you ever wondered how I had time to do all that? Or maybe you haven't. Um, I did not type all those in. What? Did not type all those in. I I figured out a way where you can convert something from Word to PowerPoint and it will automatically convert it into a file. Did you know that feature existed? Wow. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, you do it with this thing called um, new slide, slides from outline. Any document that you... Oh. Any document that you have in Word, if you can pull up this, so this is under new slide, slides from outline. If you have a document... Uh, and do you know what a style sheet is? How like heading one, heading two? You know how you do that? Yes. Anything that's marked heading one in a Word document, you can convert to a PowerPoint slide automatically. You don't have to retype it in. All you have to do is push this button. So this morning, when I wanted to review all of these Greek slides, I just pasted them in a Microsoft Word document, called them all heading one, and then said insert into my thing, and it converted them to a slide for me. I didn't have to retype it, which means anything that you can paste into a Word document, you can get to a PowerPoint slide without typing it. The other way is this whole thing here, reuse slides. Did you know you had that? And any slideshow you pull up from anywhere, uh, you like the thing, you just push the button and it will add the slide um, to your current slideshow. So if I have here and I say put this in, it put my slide in. I don't have to, I don't even have to copy it, I don't have to do anything. Um, it pays you to work smarter not harder, right? Uh, so, and do you realize that we just used our joke time to actually do something productive in Greek class? That's tricky, isn't it? We we actually did something. We did something productive while we were resting from doing something else productive. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Do you have a joke to share with us, though? Uh, I don't, <laughs> but I should. Oh, I should. I'm really disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will tell you a story about a girl who told a joke in my class one time. I couldn't believe it. 
she sat on the front row, she waved her hand to tell a joke, and so I called on her, and she told the great granddaddy of all flops in terms of a joke. And like, I didn't even know how to deal with it as a teacher because, I mean, it was, it was embarrassing how bad the joke was. Nobody <laughs> laughed and like every, everyone was like, oh, honey, never, ever trying to tell a joke. Again. I mean, it was bad. So we're studying and uh, like days later, all right, who's got a job? This girl's, I mean, just, you know. And so I called her and I thought, oh my goodness, this is going to be bad. This is going to be so bad. And she tells a joke, the punchline of which was actually the setup from the first <laughs> disaster joke. And it was hilarious. I mean, we're all doubled over laughing. She intended us to mock her and ridicule her for her bad joke telling and she was setting us up for this perfect joke days later. What's the joke? Yeah, what's and the I can't remember the joke. <laughs> I'm telling you, it, oh, was, you just it, was, it was hilarious and I thought, I thought, young lady, you know something about uh, communicating because, I mean, she played us as an audience uh, and it was so cool. And it was so cool that even Years later, maybe decades later, I don't know, I'm still telling the thing because it was that good of a, uh, but I can't remember the joke. I can't remember the joke. But it was, and it came out of left field and none of us saw it coming and it was like she did it perfect. So, Okay, so what is this? This is a definite article. So is this on the test for today? No, so why aren't we going over it? It's so Because we're studying for the final exam today, right? So say the definite article with me. Uh, let's say it out loud. Ha, tu, to, tom, hoi, tom, toys, twos. Feminine. Hey, taste, tay, tain, hi, tone, Ties, toss, and then the neuter. Ta, tu, to, ta, and then the plural. Ta with an alpha, tone, toys, ta. Now, if you don't have that yet, you, you really need to get that. You need to make this one like just second nature. One out of every seven words belongs to this chart. And I always ask this on the midterm, I always ask this on the final. All right, what is this chart? So this is the relative pronoun, how you say who or which in Greek. Okay, how does this chart relate to the definite article chart? You take any place a towel appears in the definite article, you take it off. And the only one that's different is the nominative uh, singular, hos. We just got free points on the midterm and final, right? Because the relative pronoun chart is virtually identical to the definite article chart with just one minor change. How can you tell the difference between um, the feminine nominative singular definite article and the feminine nominative singular relative pronoun? So here's the difference. Oh, the relative pronoun always has the accent and the breathing mark. So that's what you're looking for on here, accent and breathing mark. If it's an accent and a breathing mark, it's who or which. If, if it has a tau, it's a de definite article. If it doesn't have a tau in the oblique cases, then it has to be the relative. And then when you look at the nominative, there's a difference in the spelling in the masculine nominative, so it's not uh, ha versus ha, so you've got that. And then the feminine, which would be exactly the same, if it, it has to have the breathing and 
the accent to be the relative pronoun. You with me? We're in good shape, I think. Okay, so what does it say? Translate. In our K, what's the next slide say? Ain, and what, how does it translate? Ain ha logos. What's the next slide say? Kai ha logos. Ain. Okay, here's how you remember it. So it goes in RK ain ha logos. Uh, kai ha logos ain pros ton thetlon. Kai theos theos ain ha logos. Kai theos ain ha logos. Okay, so is it altos or is it hutos? It's hutos. What's the difference between altos and hutos? Altos is he, she, or it. Altos, alte, alta. Hutos, halte, tuta is this. So the hutos is masculine, so you have to say this one or. Uh, Whatever, but uh, ain ha logos, hutas ain, and then it repeats what's already occurred in the in the same order, hutas ain, n r k, pros ton thou. You see, it's in the same order. That's how you remember it. Hutas ain, n r k, pros ton thou. Okay, what's the next word? I know it's no. That's uh, two words oh, away. I don't know how to say it though. Panta. Panta. All things. Panta. Panta di. Panta. Again, it's a. So that's the third one. Panta. D. D. Again, it's a. What is it? D. Oh, you got it. You got it. How do you spell it? It starts with an A. A. Alpha. Isn't it? Al. So is it al toss or al two? Because dia plus the g means through, because through has a g in it, right? Dia plus the g is through. Dia plus the acc is on account of. Ponta. Dial two, Egenita. So Panta Dial two, Egenita. What does Egenita mean? Came into being. So it's a difference between eternal existence and coming into being. The Logos aim. Panta Egenita. Uh, and then this is uh, imperfect middle passive endings. We'll learn those later uh, from genomai, which is our word become, right? Okay. Uh, Panta diatu igenita. Kai. And there's an elegance here in that you have Panta diatu kai chorus. And Altu. Altu, good. 
Kaikoros Altu, and apart from him, Egenetol. Oh, I can't remember the Greek words for it. I know what it means. Oh, you got it. So, Alde, so let's vote. Is this right? Or see if we can get it uh, closer. So, we're. I'm not sure how you would spell Alde. How, how do you spell that? Omicron Upsilon. How would you say that out loud? Ude. Ude. And apart from him, there came about not even him. Not even one neuter thing. There isn't an atom in the entire universe that doesn't belong to Jesus because he created it. Uda hen. Um, what's the next word? Uh, with the rough breathing and with the accent, so what grammatical part of speech is ha? Rough breathing and the accent. Um, oh, it's, oh, oh. What, is, what has come to pass or something like that? Right. Our quiz for today, right? What has come about, see, see how that, that isn't the, right, because it, it has the rough ring, but it also has the accent, so it can't be the definite article. It has to be the relative neuter um, singular, right? What has come about, ha gaganen, oh, how would you say in him? Oh, I think uh, Lauren has it. How would you say it? All right. DLT would be through him. We want in him. N. And N takes the dative. So how do we put altos in the dative? Alto. Alto with, uh, with or without any other subscript. <coughs> what came about... In alto. So I would do it that way too in English, but it's actually the opposite in Greek. Zoe aim. What what has come about in him? Zoe aim. Kai. And then we have an anaphoric use of the definite article, picking up the what we just talked about. So, Kai. But we've got the definite article. Kai, is it ha zoe? That would be if you're calling zoe a man, right? Hey. Kai, hey zoe, ain. So it's feminine? It's feminine. In the Greek Bible, it isn't Adam and Eve, it's Adam and Zoe. And do you get the whole meta narrative? Where is Zoe before, like, God house built her? She's inside Adam. Have you ever thought about that? And now this is talking about what came about in alto, Zoe, Aim, Kaihe, Zoe. That's interesting to think about, isn't it? Kaihe Zoe Ain. What is the Zoe? The light of human beings. How do you spell it? 
Omega Sigma is the foes. Is it masculine, feminine, or neuter? It's neuter. So how would you do a nominative, neuter, singular, definite article? Ta. Ta fos ton anthropon. Kai ta fos in te scotia fine. Kai he scotia alta u kata la bid. Now we can get this. We can get this. Tell you what, if you if you work hard concentrating, I'll swap quizzes. With you today, I'll give you a hundred, uh, but you got to concentrate on this. All right. So what does this say? This man came into being, or a genita, and there came into being a man. There came into being a man. We get the word apostle from this word. This this is an aorist. Uh, middle um, participle. No, no it's, sorry, it's a perfect participle For, from the word sent. How would you do a sent as a perfect uh, p passive participle? So par participle is the ing form. Perfect is the having blanked. Having been. And the passive, having been sent. Para from, from God. What's a paralegal? What's a para teacher? What's a para church organization? It's where you have somebody beso beside somebody, right? So what is this? Apostolmanos para Beside. Having been sent. Motion away. Motion away. From God. We should pass those quizzes out because I'll need you to put your name on them uh, to, to um, if someone would do that for me. Thank you. Uh, having been sent from God, and then because of the little Greek boy, you are going to guess this right. <laughs> Wait, this is John. Iwanes. Uh, Iwanes is graciousness of uh, Yahweh. Really? That's what? Okay, that's very cool. What is Anima? Now we had Anima Zusi. They named my sister Helen. They named my brother for Sumicon. This is the noun form of that. Name and then Alto. What is Alto? Him, but what case is it in? Dative. Dative, and how do you translate a dative case? Um, from two or four. Two, two or four. Uh, away from is the genitive. So dative is two or four. So how do you translate this literally? There came about a man having been sent from God, anima alto iwanis. Lit literal translation. Okay, that that's what it means, but that's not the literal. Oh, you got it. Called they John. Close. Literal translation. That's a verb. They called. You you want to make on him on uh, a noun. Name of him would be genitive. Name to him, John. Name to him, John. So it's actually a Hebrew word. So Hana is grace in Hebrew, and Io is how they uh, dealt with God's sacred tetragrammaton name, Yahweh. Uh, so it's Yahweh is gracious, is what Ioan is. So it's translated by the meaning of the name rather than by like. Well, usually in English we just say John, but it actually means something. 
name to him was Yahweh's graciousness, is like what it meant to <coughs> the first century hearers. All the names in the Bible mean something. Ooh, and you're going to get this too. Hutos. Hutos. Hutos ain't in our K. Proston. We know what this word is. This man ailed it. We don't know what ailed it. But we're going to make a fantastic guess. This man ailed an ace marturion. That's exactly right. Mar we get the word martyr for a testimony. This man blanked for a testimony. We're going to make a great guess. Okay, that's exactly. Did we have to look that word up? We guessed what that word meant because we leveraged the words we knew against the word we didn't know. This one came into a witness. Hina is new. Um, Hina is the word in order that. Yes, sir. And Hina always takes a verb in the subjunctive case. Uh, subjunctive is the would, should um, mood. Um, the endings are there. Or you can see... Um, Basically, it's just a lengthened form of the um, uh, present active indicative in endings. This one came in order that, and this is our verb. So, right, so if this means for a witness as a noun, this is the verb form of that, and it's the third singular era subjunctive. We'll learn the ending later. Or to, testify. to testify. This one came in order that he should testify. And we're going to get this. We're not going to have to look this up. Peri to photos. We've had ta fos. Ta. Hey, Zoe, ain't ta fos to an anthropo. This is to photos. This is the genitive version of fos. Something the like. Good. He was not of the like, or was of the like. Thirty percent of all of Greek comes straight into English. Perry comes straight into English. We have the word perimeter. Uh, about this one came in order that he might. Bear witness, Perry to Photos about the light. In order that, Henna is always in order that, never changes. Oh, in order that. Okay, it's all. This is going to be the nominative plural, masculine nominative plural. Ponta is all things. Pontes is all people. In order that all might pistu believe, in order that all might pistuo him, right? In order that all might believe D al tu. Now, we've already had D al tu. Through him. Uk ein ekenos tafos. So, hutos ekenos. Hutos ekenos. What does hutos mean? This one, what would ekenos mean? That one. Uk ain ekenos tafos. That man was not the light. Allah. Accented would be on the last, but it's elided because of the next word. So what does this have to be? But. 
in order that Maturai say, in order that he might testify to about the light. And Alexander cried because there were no more worlds to conquer. Right, because there's more one to conquer. All right, let's see if we can speed read this a little bit. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna flash it. You translate it. In the beginning was the word, and the word was towards God and God. Was the word. This one. This, one. Was. this was. In the beginning, with God, God. All, all things, things through, through him, him came to be, and that came to be, not even one day. What might it just come about in was life, and the life was. The light of the light of men. Men. And the light in the darkness shines, and the darkness it did not take it down. There came a man sent from God. Sent from God. Name, name to him, John. Not he. That would be Altos. This is Hutos. Hutos, Echanos. This man came in order that. <laughs> In order that he might bear witness, this is a third singular, in order that he might bear witness about the light, so if it were in him, it would be in alto, this would be di alto, is through him. <coughs> That man was not the light. But <laughs> in order that he might testify about the light. Wow. Wow. That's it. First time it took us 15 minutes to do it. The second time it took us 45 seconds. What's the lesson there in terms of preparing for the um, final exam? The more, you do it, the, the more you do it, the easier it's going to get. So, you guys are doing great. Do you, do you feel pretty good about today? Okay, so uh, you, you upheld your end of the deal. Put your name on the quiz and you get 100 for the quiz for today. <laughs>